How are we doing everyone? So I've been making a lot of progress on the CRT50 build lately, but one thing I have not touched yet is the suspension. But I'll be working on the forks and shock today. Now it's actually been a while since I've torn into suspension, so this is gonna be a bit of a refresher for me. I'm excited though. The biggest reason why I wanna tear these things down is just to go through and inspect everything and replace the fluids as well. But on top of that, the seals are already leaking, so they gotta get torn apart anyways. Before I do any disassembly though, I'm gonna clean these things up. Man, the forks and shock are looking as good as ever. I'm gonna start out by disassembling the forks. The first step in taking this fork apart is to loosen up the fork cap. And in order to hold the fork in place, I'm gonna slide it into the triple clamp and use this fork cap wrench to break the cap loose. As soon as I loosen up this cap, the outer cartridge oil is gonna come pouring out. So I'm gonna dump it all into this drain pan. All right, next I'll have to loosen up the damping rod from the bottom. And to accomplish this, I'll need to put the fork in a vise. So if you don't have soft jaws on your vise, you can use part of an old tube and just fold it around and that should protect the lug plenty good enough. It would probably help if I had this vise bolted down somewhere but just haven't gotten around to it yet. So once the dampening rod is loose, you'll be able to push it out of the bottom of the fork. Now I'm gonna have to find a way to hold the damper rod extended. That way I can loosen up the nut. And from there, the damper rod can be removed from the fork. This is gonna be easiest to do with the fork out of the vise. So I'm gonna compress the fork and I've got a 12 millimeter wrench here. I'm gonna put it underneath the dampening rod. And in order to remove the end of it, I'll need to hold this part right here with a 17 millimeter wrench. So I'll need to put the fork back in the vise for this one. Once the adjuster is all loosened up, you can slide out the rod that's inside as well. Now it's a matter of compressing the fork, pulling out the wrench, and then the dampening rod will slide out of the fork. Now I just need to loosen up the cap the rest of the way, and the dampening rod will slide out of the fork. So this is what's called the dampening assembly. This is what controls the dampening action of the fork. And there's actually another chamber inside of here. So I'm gonna loosen up the cap and drain the oil out of there as well. To loosen up the inner chamber, I'm gonna have to hold the damper with a fork cap wrench and then get a wrench on the inner chamber here. Once 
Once you have the inner cartridge loosened up, you may have to push down on the damping rod to get it to break free. And like I was saying earlier, there is going to be some fluid in this cartridge. To get all the fluid out, it helps to pump the dampening rod. Now it's on to separating the upper and lower tubes. That way I can get to the seal. But first off, I'm going to have to pull out this fork spring. In order to separate the tubes, I'll have to slide up the dust seal, which I've already loosened up. And then there's a little retaining clip in here that'll have to pop out of place. Now it's a matter of sliding the two tubes away from each other. You may have to slide hammer a little bit to get it to break loose. Well boys, the fork is all apart now and ready for new bushings, seals, and fluid. So I've got some parts to order up, but in the meantime, gonna wipe these things down with a clean towel. So the right fork checked out fine. Everything seems to be in pretty good shape. And now it's on to the left fork. Give me like 30 seconds and I'll have this thing busted apart. The forks are now completely apart, and next in line is the shock. To start off, I'll need to remove the spring, which begins with loosening up these lock nuts right here. I've got the nuts loosened up, and down here on the bottom collar, there is a little clip that needs to be removed in order for the retaining ring to be slid off. So the shock reservoir is pressurized with nitrogen and sadly that's gonna have to be released in order to drain the oil. Just like a car tire, this has got a release valve on the bottom side of it. Now to drain the oil, I'll need to pull out the compression adjuster. To get all the oil out of the shock body, I'll need to pump the shaft. Alright, next up I'll be popping off this cover, that way I can get access to the snap ring that holds the shock shaft into the shock body. Just so this cover stays out of the way, I'm going to tape it to the bottom of the shock. Now to get to the circlip I was talking about, the seal head will have to be pushed down into the body. So to get the circlip out, I'll need to use two screwdrivers. One to kind of pry the clip out of the groove and the other one to pull it up. So I've got the clip out of the groove, now I'm just going to work it up and out of the shock body. Well, that's pretty much all it takes. Now I can slide the shaft out of the body. So 
So this shaft is being a bit stubborn, not really wanting to come out of the body. And I'm going to go ahead and replace the bladder anyways, but it might help to have the bladder out for removing the shaft. And this clip is removed in the same way I pulled out the other clip. So I'm just going to thread the cap back onto the, the valve and pull out the bladder. Pulling out the bladder seemed to help out, so now I'm going to pull the shaft out of the body. One thing to look for with shock bladders, when you pull them out, if they're compressed at all, or got any indentation like this one, that means they need to be replaced. So this one is toast. There really aren't too many parts to a shock. They're relatively simple. But once you start pulling apart the stack here, there's a lot of shims in there, a lot going on. So this is the shock seal, and that I'll be replacing. I think it is time to pick a winner for the giveaway on this clutch cover. Let's figure it out. All right, I'm over here on the YouTube random comment picker. Got the URL for the video punched in. Looks like we've got 802 comments. So what this is gonna do is just pick a completely random comment. All right, let's go. Oh, that's kind of cool. Who will it be? Moto Man, FMF with shorty or stock pipe. Not a bad choice. I don't mind stock pipes actually. And uh, FMFs are always a solid option too. So Moto Man, shoot me a message here on YouTube and uh, I'll get this clutch cover over to you. Not gonna lie, I had a ton of fun shooting this video and tearing down the suspension. Since I don't normally work on suspension that much, it was a nice change of pace. So once these replacement parts come in, the bushings, seals, and fluids, I'll be putting this stuff back together and that should be a good time as well. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Always appreciate y'all. I will see you later.